In this video, let's learn how to take the quadratic equations from the standard form into the vertex form through a process known as completing the squares. So we already learned about perfect square trinomials from our special products video. Here's an example of one of them. Now, we know that when we factor this out, we're supposed to look for two factors of nine that multiply together to get nine, but add together to get six. The unique thing about perfect square trinomials was that it was a specific type of trinomial where the two factors would be the exact same number. So in this case, three times three would multiply to get nine and three plus three would add to get 6. Therefore, when we factor it, it would become y equals bracket x plus 3 closed bracket squared. Now, if you look at this equation for a second, you'll actually notice that we have the vertex form here. Our a would be 1 and our k would be 0. Good. So that kind of equation isn't too hard for us to factor. But what if we had a situation like this one? Well, we just factored this one. And I know you must be thinking, ah boy, if, if only that number was a nine, then we would know how to factor this. But let me present to you an interesting idea. Wouldn't you agree that this equation doesn't change at all if we add and subtract by nine? Because after all, this itself would cancel each other out, leaving us with the original equation. So we can do this, and this starts the process of what we call completing the squares. And since you can see the parallel between this part of the equation now and the example we previously did, we know that this part here is a perfect trinomial and that this can be factored easily into this. So we know the next step can be factored into this and all we would have to do with the remainder of the equation is just simplify it to get minus 10. And that's our answer in vertex form. Great, so what did we learn from this? Well, we realized that we can add or subtract numbers into the standard form to make sure that it can become factored into the vertex form. But we also learned that we need to do this while not changing the actual equation. So if we add by a certain number, we must also subtract by that same number and vice versa. Now I want you to notice something here. Notice how when you factor a perfect square trinomial, this number here will be double this number. And when you square this number, you would get this number. Why is this the case? Well, if you compare this to the perfect square trinomial formula, you'll see that this a is being multiplied by two here and squared here. Therefore, if you see an equation that isn't a perfect square trinomial, such as our previous example, then you can create one by taking this number that is being multiplied by x, divide it by two so that in essence, we are finding this number here and then square it. The resulting number is the number that we use to add and subtract from the equation to manipulate a segment of it for us to perform completing the squares. By the way, it will always be positive because when you square a positive number, you get a positive number. And when you square a negative number, you still get a positive number. So you're always going to expect to add by a number and subtract by number to complete the squares. Therefore, as you can see, this segment of the equation matches the same format as the perfect square trinomials formula, which is why we can factor this part as a perfect square trinomial. Good. So let's remember that as we do our next example together. The reason why I say this is that we happen to have just finished doing a perfect square trinomial in this example, 
which was very similar to the example after it. So we knew that adding and subtracting by 9 would help us a great deal. But if we didn't know that, then we would have had to use our knowledge of factoring to help us out. Great. Let's try another example together to make sure that this really works out. Here we have before us y equals x squared plus 8x minus 2. Now, we realize that we cannot factor this normally. And if we want to take this to the vertex form, we'll have to complete the squares. So, what do we do again? We'll bring up the perfect square trinomials formula as reference so that we have a better idea of what we're doing. Remember, we take this number. We divide it by 2, giving us 4, so that we essentially find out what our a is. And then we square it, giving us 16. So 16 is the number that we will need to add and subtract by in order to make this segment a perfect square trinomial. Great! So now we know that this can factor into y equals x plus 4 squared, and we have minus 16 minus 2 left over, which can simplify into minus 18. And there you have it. That's our answer in vertex form through completing the squares. Now, if you ever wonder if this new equation is the same as our original one, all you'd have to do is expand and simplify we'd get x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 minus 18. If we simplify this, we'd get x squared plus 8x minus 2, which does confirm for us that we completed the squares properly and that the two equations are actually the same. Great, so let's try one last example for this video. Again, if we want to take this into the vertex form, all we have to do is complete the squares. Remember, we take this number, which is negative 10, and then we divide it by two, and we'd get negative five. And then we square that number to get 25. So 25 is our number. We'll add and subtract by that right here. This time, since we have a subtraction on this term here, We'll make sure we write x minus 5 squared as our factored version of this part. Notice how it's not x plus 5 squared. That would be completely incorrect, since if you expand it, you'd get x squared plus 10x plus 25, and not x squared minus 10x plus 25. Great, so we just need to simplify this, and we'd get x minus 5 squared minus 7 as our final vertex form. Awesome. Well, that's it for this video, but there is a bit more to learn when it comes to completing the squares. So we encourage you to take a look at our part two video now, where we will be tackling questions that involve completing the squares with fractions in there, and also completing the squares when there is a number other than one in front of the x squared, like so. And that's it for part one of completing the squares. We hope to see you in part two.